A. Now time for the seven things you'll be talking about today. Number seven. Voting is starting. Georgia saw record early voting turnout on the first day of early voting for the 2024 election with over 306,000 voters uh, casting ballots nearly double the 2020 numbers. In Alabama, Attorney General Steve Marshall has requested the dismissal of a DOJ lawsuit challenging a program that removes ineligible voters, including non-citizens, from voter rolls, citing its proximity to the upcoming November election. Yes, the DOJ, after early voting has started, is making the argument that Maybe we should just let illegal voters vote. That's okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, The program violates the National Voter Registration Act by risking the wrongful removal of eligible voters and creating confusion. It seeks to remedy uh, to prevent further violations. Look, if they want illegal voters voting, it's because they think they benefit from it. And ain't that the truth? Number six. Vice President Kamala Harris did in an, an interview Uh, with the ambassador of black people, the apparent media representative for all black people, Charlemagne the God. Uh, Kamala Harris uh, tried to say she is stronger on the economy, suggested that giving uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin COVID tests cost black Americans uh, their lives, which is painfully stupid. Uh, She discussed her commitment to pandering to black people with reparations and emphasized her support for decriminalizing marijuana to rectify past injustices against black men. And if that wasn't embarrassing enough, Harris also defended her speaking style, asserting that her constant repetition of stupid phrases is in fact very disciplined. It helps her reach stupid voters. Sorry, distracted. No, I had it right. Stupid voters. That's her argument. At least she knows her target. Number five. Uh, One of these weird and creepy stories is back again. uh, The Mobile Public Library faces the potential loss of $486,000 in state funding if it fails to comply with new state guidelines restricting minors' access to certain materials, which is a bit odd that that is even a controversy. Like, conversation goes something like this. Stop showing smut and inappropriate things to children. And the librarians go, but we want to. And they say, well, then you can't have state funds. And they go, maybe we don't want to. Library director Margie Calhoun has vowed to adopt the state guidelines, which aim to prevent minors from checking out sexually explicit content without parental approval, to safeguard the library's funding. Again, librarians, why are you such freaks? What's wrong with you? Like, stop showing kids porn. Uh, We will if there's enough money involved. Number four. A recent NBC News poll shows a five-point swing in favor of former President Donald Trump, leaving him tied with Kamala Harris at 48% support amongst registered voters and solidifying that momentum is indeed in his favor. I'm not saying I saw this first, but I saw this first. Uh, Harris had uh, previously held a five-point lead over Trump in September, but her declining popularity and growing voter concerns about her connection to Biden's policies have helped narrow the race. Not helping is Joe Biden being like, she did it too. It was me. It was us. We did it together. Both of us. We did it together. Trump's support has surged as Republicans rallied behind him, while Harris lost momentum, uh, particularly among young and independent voters. Yes, because we are past the point of, isn't she lovely? To the point where she actually has to have some opinions if she, you know, is a moron. Number three. Former President Donald Trump, during an interview with Bloomberg News in Chicago, that described the Republican Party as, quote, the party of common sense, end quote, and outlined his economic plans for a potential second term. He discussed key election issues, his stance on tariffs and foreign policy, receiving applause from the audience when defending his trade policies and relationships with world leaders. Another great moment in all of this is the Bloomberg anchor who was doing the interview that did this little thing where he's like, oh, well, you got to understand this is what most people at the Wall Street Journal. He's like, Wall Street Journal's wrong all the time. And you know what? You're wrong all the time, too. He's calling these people out to their face and fighting with them, showing 
and that this guy understands exactly what's going on. And, and they're like, oh, what's wrong with this guy? He's losing a step mentally. What are you talking about? He's fighting with very smart people on global television. What do you mean he's like hiding? He's right there. Number two. Following a recent mass shooting that killed four and injured 17, uh, Birmingham Mayor Randall Woodfin announced a new 19-member advisory commission to combat the city's gun violence surge when the answer is clear. Jail. Hey, what, what are we doing here? And by the way, make it 20 members. In fact, make it 21. One for each person shot that night. Put me on the committee and I will stand up and say, have you guys thought about jail? Like putting people in jail? The commission composed of business, criminal justice, and community leaders is tasked with identifying effective strategies to reduce homicides and will deliver a preliminary report within 60 days. Or as I like to call it, about 32 dead bodies. That, that, that's about probably what we'll be looking at here in this situation. Again, jail. The answer is jail. Now, time for the number one thing you'll be talking about today. Uh, U.S. Representative Dale Strong, a Republican out of Monrovia, uh, and fellow Republicans on the House Committee on Homeland Security are pressing DHS Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas and FEMA for their inadequate financial response to Hurricane uh, Helene and Milton. The lawmakers expressed concern that funds needed for disaster relief may have been diverted to support migrant services, leaving storm-affected Americans without sufficient aid. Do you know where they got that idea? Uh, Alejandro Mayorkas, who said um, that FEMA funds had been diverted to deal with illegal immigration, leaving Americans vulnerable during natural disasters that FEMA is supposed to deal with. They didn't just make this up. This was being said by members of the media, by people at the Department of Homeland Security, and this was said by the White House. And, and now we're pretending like it's insane that anyone say such things. Who would ever come up with such a thing? What a crazy thing that they've said. Why are they repeating the things we've said and then saying that we said them? That's what actually happened here. Uh, but they're continuing to try to make this argument that they just don't understand. But I think we all understand what's going on. Uh, so kudos to Dale Strong and the House Republicans for trying to get to the bottom of this and, and hold these people accountable. That's what they're supposed to be doing with them. And, and I hope they continue doing that because it's very important that they do just that. All right. You can jump in here right now and get involved right here, right now. It is very simple. Pick up the phone, talk or text 866-494-WVNN. Get your questions in for Ted with him or yell at me about any of these things. It is all very simple to do. You can also email us. You've got mail. Dale at WVNN.com. It's an easy way to get in there as well. And we will continue through this program. We've got Todd Pyro from Fox and Friends First coming up. And then Jeff Poor will join us uh, from FM Talk 1065 down to Mobile. Lots happening. Stay tuned. Get WVNN's Dale Jackson's seven things you should be talking about today right in your email box every morning. Go to yellowhammernews.com and sign up today.